Good day, everyone. Quiet for me here. We're doing something a little different, something a little cozier. We're going to be doing a Last Epoch lore video. This is here to introduce new players and existing players to the lore. The game has great story, but has a hard time telling it sometimes because all the notes scattered about and the way the story is presented through time travel. And I'm here to try and help make it a little bit more cohesive. Today's video will be covering the first bit of the lore established in the campaign starting from when you first start your character and will end at the end of Ruin Era in the end of time right before you enter the Imperial Era to the Outcast Camp. We'll also be establishing a little bit of background lore for the universe to help give better understanding. Now, there's a couple things I want to let you guys know before we get into this. First, when I cite a note in this game because notes tend to share all the same names and they're not differentiated by note one or two i make those differentiations based off of when we find the notes so if the first note we find was named the singe note then we call it singe note one the second one we find i will cite it as singe note two in the area and this will be a common occurrence as all notes in the game share the same name the second thing i'm going to establish is i try to keep everything from the player perspective so that means when I reference you, unless it's stated in a note, then I'll be referencing the character who wrote the note. Almost in every case, you in this will be referenced to the player. That being said, in this timeline, we'll be focusing the start of the Divine Era in which the, our character first starts. The Ruined Era. And the End of Time are the three major ones may make a uh, timeline video later but for right now that's all you need to know as a new player now let's get into this shall we the pinnacle gods etera and orbis made the world as we know it etera the goddess of creation created her four servants humanity and the world orbis the god of destruction created the void and reflections of his power to bring about destruction to of all things. For a time, Etera's creation developed, and there was no hint of the void. Eventually, Etera created her servants, Rae, Hira, Plagon, and Majasa. These servants became known as gods to humanity and the people of the world, and began to form their own factions. As the void spreads throughout time and space, Etera abuses her power into a final creation known as the Epoch. Fearing this power is falling into the wrong hands, she splits the creation into three pieces and entrusted it to her own faction of humanity, the Keepers, with four disappearing. Etera tasked them with keeping the pieces of the Epoch safe and separate through rituals, cited by Keepers Record Note 1. And now we get into the story from the player perspective. While traveling, you encounter Grail, who is going to meet the Keeper on a mission from Herat, his god, to form an alliance against Rae. You and Grail meet Lena, the Keeper, who has chosen to accept this alliance because she sees no downside, as a note found in the camp of Keeper Lena. Lena asks Grail to go to the mountains, and you to aid Balthus, an impulsive Keeper, to secure this alliance. You travel to help Balthus, who is currently in a fortress under siege by Rae's forces. After reaching him, you see a shard on a pedestal. You are ambushed and help Balthus to defend the shard. Once the ambush is beaten, he insists that he was fine. But he'll tell you more once you've already reached safety. Together, you fight through the fortress discovering that the shard you saw was a part of the uh, epoch and where the three shards were located as of Keeper's Record Note 1 and that none of the gods have sought out the Keepers until recently as of Balthus Journal eventually reaching the cliffside outside as he's about to tell you more about everything or respects Orion and his pet Ember Wing kidnapped Balthus and the shard he was carrying. Horuspex Orion, a general of Rae, saw a treasure of inconceivable power. 
in the Flames of Prophecy. The Shards. Horus Beck's Orion Journal 2 states, He feels that the servants of Rae should have this treasure, and not the Keepers who blasphemy by claiming a greater connection to Etera than those serving Rae, inheritor of her domain, as cited by Singe Letter 2. You return to the Keeper's camp, where Maeve, another follower of Hewa, tells you that Grail found some kind of weapon during his trip to the mountains. Walk over and Lena. She tells you where Orion is camped so that you can complete your escort quest. She offers you backup, but like Balthus, you let her know you do not need her help. After fighting through the camp, and killing Orion. He saved Balthus, and he tells you that he got kidnapped with not just one, but two shards of the Epoch. And that is the most sacred relic of Etera with the power of time travel. The Keepers have kept these shards separate to prevent abuse of their power. Like Rae's winning the war and becoming unstoppable if he got it. Confirming Lena's worry, he kept two shards to protect her from attention instead of protecting the shards. He mentioned that the Heaborn champion, Rail, should have retrieved the final shard. Balthas hurries you back to the camp because Rae is getting close. Not even the keepers know the full power of the Epoch and that Grail will not make it back in time. Once back at the camp, Balthas states that the shards must go where Rae cannot. Lena would disapprove of his plan. The Keepers have been following the Terra's tradition all this time and successfully acting as the lone protectors of the Shards and the Terra's secrets. Fate has shown its hand, necessitating drastic measures and making you a part of something greater. Balthus says he'll keep the two Shards safe. He opens a portal and you are dragged through with him. You wake up in the ruined version of the Keeper's Camp. See a shard of the Epoch. You pick up the shard, but see no sign of Balthus or the second shard. Beginning your search, you meet Guardsman William, who is surprised to see you because only elders and rangers are allowed past here. He mentions that only cultists are found in the void outside the last refuge. And when you ask what the void is, he asks if there's something wrong with you and tells you that the dark tar that is consuming everything is the void. And Last Refuge is the only place free of the void, and he agrees to take you to an elder, praying that you are not corrupted so they do not have to kill you. You meet Elder Burren, who says that he does not recognize you. You tell him that a guard sent you here. Burren senses the shard on you and states, you need to get to the council immediately. He asks if the shard is misplaced or if you're the foretold holder of the shards. He asks you to find Guard Captain Bravin in the city who will take you to the Council of Elders, the leaders of the Last Refuge, to determine if you are the holder. As you leave, Rand, a villager, laments that Etera has left us, that the gods have been consumed, that the immortal emperor himself has disappeared, and the void is coming for everything else. Once you find Guard Captain Bravin, he points you towards the council chambers, but cannot leave his post because they are fighting the void. He asks you help Elder Urza if you see him. You continue onto the council chamber where Urza is fighting the void outside. You help him enter the chamber and meet Elder Gaspar, who also senses that you have a shard of the Epoch. Gaspar asks, who are you? After you explain how you got there, he tells you that they have been using one shard to defend humanity and they thought the other shards were lost. You are currently in the future and to return to your original time, you need all three shards. 
if they did not lose to the Void first. Hundred years ago, Void spread across the surface of the world, consuming everything in its path, and driving humanity into caves underground. The Void has finally found the last refuge, and Gaspar tells you to go to Elder Panion's study because he's an expert with weaponizing the shard against the Void. Though, you might already be out of time. As you travel through the city, you find records of the first elder, Balthos, who found himself in the ruined era with only one shard. He seeks refuge and plans to try and find other shards while worrying that his desperate plan was for nothing. He finds survivors, helps them to build the last refuge and establish the elders to guard his knowledge in the shard. He laments what led the ruined era. Quote, history is not observed. It's made. We must act. Quote. His final note lets all who read know that he is gone. But the last of humanity should be protected. For context there, if you didn't know, those records were from info of the past during the ruined era. Continue to Banyan's study, where you find his three apprentices. Apprentice Farron lets you know that Panion took the shard to face the void. But that, quote, it's too late for us, too late for him, too late for everyone. Orbis is already here, end quote. After defeating the corrupted apprentices, you return to the council chamber. Gaspar tells you that Panion was just there, but he fears that the Void is manipulating him and turning his courage into arrogance. Causing him face the Void alone, he asks you to in intercept Panion on his way to where the Void first broke into the city and save the Shard before it is lost to the Void. You find Panion too late, as he is corrupted by the Void. After defeating him, you claim the second shard that resonates with the first. A portal appears before you. After going through the portal, you meet a forgotten knight who directs you onward to the path wrapped around the tree. At the end of the path, you meet a version of Elder Gaspar, who explains that, like him, you can absorb the potential from other versions of yourself that have faded. He has lost sense of time and his original self, but he can guide your shades to you. Your will must be absolute though, or you will lose yourself. You successfully gained the power your other selves have lost. And he guides you to the last shard of Epoch. You return to the council chamber in the ruined era, and Gaspar tells you that the city is lost even with the power of two shards. He gives you a rune and directs you to a passage that will take you to the Temple of Atera, where the last shard is kept. The only hope for humanity is uniting the shards, returning to your time, and averting the ruined era. After completing some fetch quests, and vanquishing a void amalgamation, you make it to the Temple of Atera. There, a mysterious voice speaks to you as you travel inward toward the shard. Finally, as you enter the final room through a portal, the voice speaks for a final time. Quote, Etera is dead. Orbis is free. End quote. Repeating, circling around the Emperor's remains. You defeat the remains, and your two shards resonate with the third. You claim the third shard to take the portal to the end of time. There, end of time, Gaspar tells you that the void began to sweep over the world in the year 1005 AG, and that this knowledge came from many travelers who've reached the end of time. He believes that the greed of the immortal emperor at the time unleashed the void upon the world. You learn that completing the epoch will guide you in a quest to defeat the void, save the world, 
and timelines. You make your first controlled jump back in time to the Imperial Era to oppose the will of Oribus. And that's where we'll stop there. This is just an intro, after all, to the lore. And if you guys did like this, let me know. And if you thought this was a great foundation, but there's ways to improve, also let me know. I would like to do a segment for each part of the campaign, and I would like to do more theory crafting lore in the future, but only if you guys are interested. This was a lot of work over the course of three days to make, and I had to get my wife to help me with the script because I'm not great at that. So, if you liked the video, liked the information, and want to know more, feel free to ask, give a like, subscribe, and comment. Stay safe, and enjoy the lore. Peace.